Hi, and welcome to the episode 2 of Game Dev Adventures, the game development series. In this episode, we will go through the character creation process. We will see how to use bones to animate our character, implement him into our game, and also explore the infinite possibilities of bone animation. So, let's begin! We begin by preparing the character for bone animation, dividing each part of its body. For animation, we'll use a software called Dragon Bones. It works directly with the Godot engine, and it's free. In Dragon Bones, all the parts are imported individually. To rig the character, we can use one or more bones for each part, depending on the looks we want. I set some bones for the hair, and also a bone for each leg, cheek, and eye. After naming each bone and setting their dependencies, it already moves. We then set up a mesh that will define how each bone will influence the body. Then we bind the bones to the mesh and suddenly it is moving, but not moving as it should. To fix that, we have to tell Dragon Bones how much a bone will control a point in the mesh. And it is complete, each part is moving the way it should and we are ready to animate. We start by creating an idle animation, which is just a simple breathing sequence. It is made by moving, scaling and rotating the bones using a timeline. And it's done! Our first animation is complete and looks really smooth. Now we just import the files into Godot and it's alive! That's how it looks with the tile sets from the last episode. Pretty good! Now back to Dragon Bones, we start the run cycle. It was way harder to make. That was my first run cycle iteration. It's good, but there was something missing. The very next day, I added some squishiness by changing the size of my bones in each step. And it looks awesome. I also made some animations for when the character is jumping, landing, and in mid-air. Back to Godot, I still had to code everything, so I made a new character script. I tested it and... It does not work. After some debugging and actually putting collisions on the tile maps, I ran another test and... It works! It looks amazing! For the jump, I wanted a system in which I can control exactly how high the player jumps and for how long. To achieve that, I followed a tutorial by Game Endeavor, for which I will put the link down into the description. After a lot of work and messing with the values, this is how the game looks. The movement feels really nice, really, I have no complaints. It also works really well on the controller, on both D-pads and sticks. Just a quick reminder, be sure to subscribe if you like this kind of content, I'll be making much more, thanks! And then, I decided to make a little experiment. I drew a simple backpack in our character and exported it to Dragon Bones. I attached the backpack into one of the bones and just like that, it works! I was so amazed by how easy it was that I thought, how about making skins? and I had way too much fun making them. First, I made Link. Then I made Kratos, he looks so badass. Then I made Pac-Man. And my absolute favorite, Spider-Man, he looks way too good. That's only to show you how easy it is to make different skins, equipments and accessories using bones. It will be really handy in the future. And that's all for today. I had way too much fun making this video and I'm eager to make more, so be sure to stick around. That's all from me, cheers!